So in respect to this question, we've got a number of parts, and we start off talking in relation to operating segments, which is IFRS 8. I'm not too worried about quoting the standard number. Let's take a look at the requirements. Discuss the principles for the determination of a company's reporting segments. So I'd split my answer into two because the question has got the word and in the requirements. So the principles are that a reported segment appears separately if it satisfies at least one of the following tests. So it's 10% of internal plus external revenue. For Norman, this would be 10% of 1,010, it's 101 million. Ten percent of the higher of profit making or loss making segments. Now, taking a quick look at the question, it's quite clear that the profit making segments are bigger than the loss making segments. So for Norman, this would be 10%. Our profit-making segments are 60 plus 105, so that's 165. So that's 16.5 million. 10% of segment assets so for Norman this is 10% of 3100 it's 310 million dollars Segments are those parts of the business that generate revenues and costs produce information reviewed by the chief decision maker and produce accounting information. So I'm trying to put discrete parts into my answer. So that's the principles. 
Then if we look at a more detailed application to Norman, and this is where I'll bring in the 75% rule, the European region satisfies the revenue rule but not the profit or asset rule. However, you only have to satisfy one of these rules, as I've said, it's got to at least one, it will still be shown separately as a reporting segment. The Southeast Asia segment satisfies all three ten percent conditions. And so will be shown as a segment. However, Europe plus Asia only account for 50%. And so the other regions would also be shown. So 50% of external revenue, I should have said. As an operating segment to take the total external revenue beyond 75% of the total. So I've tried to put that as briefly as I can. Yeah, it could be that I'm running short of time on the question. It's 11 marks. Have we got 11 points? Well, we've got, we've got to satisfy at least one, and then we've got our three tests there. We've probably got two marks discussing what a segment is, and two, one, two, there's potentially my 11 marks. I've got the what, the because, the why, all the time. I think you could probably write a little bit more, but I'm just trying to show you, you don't have to write reams and reams and reams. We then move on to part B of the question. And the first thing that we've got here is the hotel sale. And if you're short of ideas, if, you, if you're struggling for this, go back to basics, go to the framework and say, what are we doing it? It's a sale. So what's the, what we normally associate a sale with? A derecognition of an asset. And I would conclude that the hotel sale should not result in the hotel
being de-recognized from Norman's SFP because Norman still has the risks and rewards of ownership. The rewards are taking 75% of the profits the risks are having to give conquest at least 15 million dollars a year okay, we might not make enough profit to be able to pay them yeah it's a risky taking business isn't it so the money from conquest should be treated as a loan. So we would debit cash 200 million credit loan 200 million. the 25% of the profits given to Conquest well what do you give people when you borrow money from them? Hmm. would be treated as interest and charge to the income statement. So we've got our debits and credits in. We've explained how would we would deal with the items. We would keep the asset in our accounts and we would depreciate it over its useful life. It's not a sale and lease back because we're not paying rentals. We're just giving them 25% of the profits. So that's the hotel sale. Um, next we've got the vouchers. This one's a bit of a weird one. It says, so we're giving vouchers to customers when they stay. They give uh, a 30% discount if they come back within three months. So it's an incentive. Um, and we've got $20 million worth of eligible discount vouchers at the end of the year. The vouchers represent an income stream that is separate from the hotel room sales. At the year end, they are likely to generate well, it's going to be, we've got $20 million worth of vouchers and one voucher in five or one fifth of them are likely to turn into revenue. 
So they're likely to generate $4 million worth of revenue. But that's not going to be $4 million worth of cash, is it? People that, instead of giving me cash, people are going to give me a voucher. We should reduce the amount shown from hotel room sales in our income statement to take account of the vouchers. And what we're going to do is we're going to split revenue between room sales and voucher sales. So our our hotel room income it's going to be well we've received 300 million from the hotel rooms but if you think about it the total of hotel room sales and voucher sales comes to 304 million. So that would work out as 296.1 million and our voucher income we've generated 300 million dollars worth of sales of which four out of the combined total of 304 relate to vouchers of which 4 multiplied through gives me a figure of 3.9 the two combined add up to 300 million so therefore what I would do here is I would debit cash because this is what I've received from customers and I would credit revenue in the income statement from hotel sales or hotel room sales 296.1 and we would credit deferred revenue with the balance of 3.9 and the reason for that is that when these customers come back next year we're going to have to deduct from our sales the $30 off vouchers from the cash we receive. So we shouldn't recognize it as revenue until they present the vouchers. Now if they present more vouchers or less vouchers than we anticipated we would have to deal with that through next year's income statement. So we will recognize this 3.9 million as revenue but we've not yet delivered the product, which is the hotel rooms. So therefore, we cannot do that until the critical event, which is delivering the, the hotel rooms, takes place next year. So I thought that was a really nasty one. Very few people got that on the day. But a few people you know, made, made an effort and credit was given. The next, uh, we've got grant income. I mean, this is an F7 topic, and this is typical of the examiner saying to students you can't afford to forget what you learnt at F7. And let's face it, the F7 textbook 600 pages and the F and the P2 textbooks another 600 pages. So I think that's being a little bit harsh, but it's F7 beefed up a bit for P2. Um grant income can either be offset against expenses or it relates to capital expenditure. Now if we take a look at this one, uh, in respect of Norman it's a little bit confusing.
Although Normans grant income, uh, it says the intention of the grant income uh, is in relation to um, revenue expenditure. in the form of wages it is actually granted when PPP PPE expenditure which is capital in nature occurs. Norman will therefore have a choice of treatment per IFRS It could debit cash 70 million and it can offset it against the PPE cost of 70 million. Or it could debit cash 70 million and credit deferred income 70 million which it would then release to the income statement over the PPE useful life. The net effect in the income statement will be the same because if you offset it against PPE you reduce the value of PPE so therefore you reduce your depreciation charge in the income statement or we could have the full depreciation charge in the income statement but we've got income in the income statement coming from the release of the deferred income. So it doesn't really make a lot of difference. It does say if the cost of the buildings is less than 500 million, we could say that there is a contingent liability for the repayment of the 70 million should PPE costs be less than 500 million. The treatment would depend on whether repayment is probable, possible or remote. So effectively here we're applying our rules in respect of contingent liabilities and we're not given the information, so we can't really go any further. And remember, there's only four marks here for the grants. Appropriateness and quality of discussion. To me, 